Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we will take you back in time. Not quite to BC, but very close. Back to the time when James Jazz Hands Yule first stepped onto the stage here at Inverudi Panto. Firstly though, let us take you further back to the year of James's birth, 1841. Who would have thought that a brief moment of indiscretion by his parents behind the local pub would have led to so many years of displeasure for so many people? But we are where we are. <sighs> Jazz hands. Here we go. Another wonderful performance. <laughs> Jim's parents were full of love for him. His dad was a bit of a joker and enjoyed poking fun at him. One memory he's spoken about is when he was due to be christened and his dad had arranged with the minister to have piranha fish put into the font. His dad also loved nothing more than a good game of hide and seek. He would hide and Jim would have to find him. He would hide anywhere and everywhere. Glasgow, Edinburgh, London, Cardiff to name but a few. Anything to get away from James. We don't have the option of running away, but we can only hope that one day he decides to do a full shop in Tesco. Hi, my name is Keith Donaldson and I'm the producer of the Inverurie Panto. I first met Jim when I did the uh, set for Trap 4 Productions in 2002. At that point, Jim had been doing the panto for at least 60 years at that point. Uh, and then I bought the production company uh, in 2008. And with that uh, came lots of things. Uh, we've got the company databases and the wardrobe. And uh, we also got James. Um, so, He's a stalwart and then has been in the pantos and then up until uh, 2011 uh, Jim took a sabbatical, he took a year out and we finally thought we'd got rid of him and then he came back in 2012. So, uh, you know, he's, he is a trooper, a stalwart and um, just not as good as Gavin Davis. Scottish actor, how can I help you? Oh, Craig, Craig, yes, yes. Oh, oh, could you hold on a moment, please? Thank you, thank you. And, and 
Blitzkrieg Pike! Oh. It's a right to the pound too! I'll keep him on hold. Hello, Craig! Sorry, I was just getting some fan mail delivered from the posty. Yes! Yes. Oh, it's about Peter Pan. Yes. Oh, you loved my audition. Yes. Except some cats, including movement. Yes! <laughs> I thought you'd like it. <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> anyway, yes. Oh! You want to offer me the part of Dame? Well, there's one thing, Craig. I have to ask. I don't ask much. But, um, <clears throat> what is that Davidson person doing? Oh, Captain Hook. Oh. So it's one Dame only. Right. Let me get back to my management and I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Thank you. One dame only. Oh, <laughs> they are going to see how a dame should be in Pancho. Oh, Pan, I'm so excited. Come with me. Oh, let's go to the bedroom. Oh, hold on, Anne. I've got to get something. Yes. Well, what can I say about the wonderful James Yule? I've been doing shows with Jim for so many years now. It's it's a fantastic experience, a huge learning curve every year. But I will say that one thing that I struggle with is be nice to gym day. We had one just the other day and it's one of the most difficult days of my entire year. However, what I can say is when I go on stage with Jim, it all changes. Then he comes out with all this ad-libbing, overacting. And let me tell you something, Jim. Every time you come on that stage, you try to take over, I've fucking had enough of it. But, Gavin of the hand, <laughs> what a guy! <laughs> Hi, my name's Ryan. I joined Inverurie Panto in 2011. Um, I was super excited to join the cast because I thought finally I'm going to meet one of my uh, heroes in the Panto world, and that was James Yule. Uh, you'll see from uh, all my photographs on the wall here that I'm quite a big fan. Um, yeah, uh, maybe a bit of a stalker, but we won't go into that. You can also see from my t-shirt here that uh, I also am a big fan of James. However, in 2011, James had decided to take a sabbatical. Um, I wasn't there and I was a little bit disappointed. Um, however, that's when I met Gavin Davidson. Um, I'm now quite a, a big fan of his work as well. And uh, when I finally got to work with Jim in 2012, it, it just, it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. They should say that you should uh, never meet your idols because you'll just have your dreams crushed, and I really did. This one party, and this is what happens. The bastards! <laughs> Hello, I'm Audrey, and I'm the choreographer of the Inverurie Panto. It was great fun working with all the cast and trying to come up with the choreography for them all to do. There's a certain member though who is a bit of a challenge to try and get him to move in the right direction and in time, and really just pulling my hair out with him. Um, he's just not up to the same standard as everybody else, in particular Gavin Davidson, he's just wonderful and even in one of the pan previous pantos we had a whole dance off based around Gavin because he's that ace and he's even going to be the dance captain as well. So if I'm really worried, Jim, did you hear him on stage? I did actually. He yeah. called me a twat. You can't, can't be doing that. No, you can't. Because I should be professional, not like that. You know what? What? I think you maybe should text Craig. Do you think so? I think you should. I think it's something he needs to know about. Okay. Yeah. 
What should I say? Just tell the truth. Just tell them what happened. Craig. Jim. Jim. Yeah. Call me a twat. Yeah. <laughs> right, boys, I'm away to my meeting with Keith and Craig, though I think it's a promotion or even a pay rise. <laughs> I don't care. I've got a feeling I might be something to do last night's moment. Oh, I can't believe you'd say that on stage. There was kids there. Are kids there, I know. I think it would be quite a serious conversation. Oh, well, I think so, and I'm 45. I would say twat on stage. Honest, awful. I want professional. After Craig received the text from Ricky, James was called to an important meeting with the director and producer. Somehow Jim got his wires crossed. Instead of a promotion or a pay rise, it was an official verbal warning he received. writing the script and uh, I've done that for some years now and um, got a great cast um, one or two minor issues which I as a, a writer have to take account of um, and I have to make things particular to certain members of the cast one of the people who sort of springs to mind is uh, Jim, Jim Yule uh, Jim's been with us for many years and Jim has a, a unique set of talents um, but it became apparent some years ago um, to me that acting uh, sadly isn't one of them. So um, we had to start coming up with uh, ideas to try and um, make things as easy as possible for Jim with his special needs. So um, when it came to Snow White, things um, really came to a head and uh, we actually devised a plan to keep him off the stage altogether. Um, so that he could be elsewhere in the building and actually read his lines from the script. Um, oh, frankly, why I bother to write a script for Jim is, is a mystery to me because he just makes it up as he goes along anyway. Uh, I don't think my life's ever been the same since. <laughs> um, 
fit my memories at gym, and he didn't turn up for a show, he was late for a show because he was in Tesco doing his shopping, and he turned up at my wedding in fuzzy dress, in a wig, and everybody thinks on about it to this day, how there's a strange man at my wedding, dressed up in goodness knows fit regalia. <laughs> There's only one gym view of that is for sure. And I call him Grand Dog Gym because he is like my granddad. So I love you dearly. I'm glad there's just one of you though. And I've got to say that you're not number one game, I'm afraid. Gavin Davis is definitely my favourite. Love you! Hi, I'm Joanne Peacock and I first met Jim during Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs when I was taken in by Craig and Keith to the Panto group um, in order to care for Jim when he was under the stage um, as the magic mirror. They asked me to do it because they know I had experience in elderly care, like an empty a catheter bag, um, help people up and down stairs, and that was really my job. Um, the following two years I've been asked back in various different roles um, on stage this year but really, these are a guys um, I am actually still here to care for Jim, um, as Craig and Keith have asked me to do. Um, I am quite thankful for the help of others, including the fabulous Gavin Davidson, who goes to get Jim and picks him up and drives him to rehearsals and to uh, shows as well. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it without him. He also goes and stays with Jim sometimes just to give Anne a wee bit of respite. Um, I do enjoy working with Jim, it can be quite challenging at times, particularly during tasks like helping him remember his lines and getting him on stage, um, but he is a lovely old man and um, I do enjoy working with him. A jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, oh it's panto time! <laughs> about Jim. Well, what can I say? James Yule, he's been a mentor to me. I met him 16 years ago probably and since then I've learned so much. Really he's been an inspiration. It's been a wonderful experience, a wonderful relationship. I actually carry the spare with me everywhere. He's called James and I just can't thank him enough. I mean I have to say things did change slightly back in Cinderella is probably the year and there was a few new people came in and unfortunately it was a lot of new talent 
and his, his position was filled, to be honest, by the mammoth talent, this wonderful man, Gavin Davidson. And since then, I'm afraid, it's just become a bit too much hard work. It's just too much for Jim and he can't cope. And Gavin's really stepped up and he's filled those shoes admirably and really taken the panda to new heights. Year, things finally came to a head with Jim. His glitter addiction had pushed him over the edge as his jealousy of Gavin finally overwhelmed him. However, Jim did not complete his run of Beauty and the Beast because his agent had managed to get him a better offer at a bigger venue. Of course, his Panto family made sure they were all there to support him. We couldn't have a documentary about the Scottish actor without hearing a word from the man himself. However, Jim appears to have got the wrong memo and has recorded a message for Gavin's big birthday next year. Hi Gavin. Jane Jewel here. You know me. Scottish actor. Panto legend. Oh Gavin, I've known you for several years now. And what can I say? Not a lot. I mean, we first met at editions and way back when and I knew you were going places. Well, going nowhere that is, until I took you under my wing. I, I've taught you everything you know, Gavin, and well, you still know nothing, but I'm just here. I'm just here to wish you a really happy birthday, if you live that long, that is, because You'll never be as old as me, Gavin. Seriously, Gavin, I want you to have a really, really great day. You've been a great mate to And I love you to bits! Happy birthday, Gavin! <laughs>